risen. He is risen indeed. Will you please stand and join me in our call to worship? A new day, Christ lives in our hearts and in our world. Christ lives in the face of an unexpected neighbor. Christ lives as we share God's abundance. Christ lives as we care for God's creation. Christ lives as we share the good news. Let our joy be complete. Christ lives. community of faith, we do stray or turn from the ways of love and justice. 
We believe that if we confess, we shall be forgiven and freed from the burden of guilt and empowered to carry on the ministry of Christ. Therefore, with confidence in the mercy of God, let us pray together. We use a lot of words, gracious God, but do little to turn them into deeds. Instead of being of one heart and soul, we choose sides and form groups of folks just like us. Blessed with great grace, we have trouble sharing it with those who need it the most. Forgive us, God of love. Forgive us as we step out of our shadows into your light. Restore us as we reveal our brokenness. Hear us as we proclaim Jesus Christ as our risen Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. This is the good news we have to declare. God leads us out of the shadows to walk in the light of Christ. This is the word we have heard. Our faithful God forgives our sins and raises us to new life. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ we are forgiving. As we have been loved by God, let us greet one another with peace offered to us. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. now invite uh, Vivian and Zach to come on up with little Waylon and for all of the children um, to come up here in front as well. And Cora. Why don't you stand right here, Viv? Look at, Look at that little, little baby. Pretty cool, huh? You want to come sit over here, Sophia, right here for me? So you can see what's going on. You too, Nora? Oh, look at all these little people. Come on up. What? One second. Come on up, little man. So hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. So go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, 
and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. So this morning, obeying the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and confident of God's promises, we baptize those whom God has called. In baptism, God claims each of us. God seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death and uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love and peace and justice. Let us remember with joy our own baptisms this day as we celebrate this sacrament. So Zach and Vivian, I would ask that you show your purpose for Wayland to be baptized by answering these questions. Do you step away from the ways of sin that separate you from the love of God? If so, say, we do. Do you trust in the love and grace of Jesus Christ? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Our Lord Jesus Christ ordered us to teach those who are baptized. Do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Wayland by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging him to know and follow Christ and to be a faithful member of Christ's Church? If so, answer, we do. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, for the water of baptism. For in this water we are buried with Christ in his death, and from it we are raised to, his, to share in the resurrection. Send your spirit now, O God, to move over this water, that me, it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sins of those who are cleansed by it, and raise them to new life and bring them to the body of Christ in whose name we pray. Pour out your spirit this day upon Wayland that he may follow you and strengthen him to serve you with joy until the day that you make all things new. Amen. All right. Hey, little man. He's like, Dad, who are you handing me to? Waylon, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, see what love that God has for us. that's printed in your bulletin.
got to give him a kiss. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of life, you have called each of us by name and pledged to each of us your faithful love. We pray for your child this day, Waylon. Watch over him, guide him as he grows in faith. Give him understanding and a quick concern for neighbors. Daily increase your Holy Spirit more and more until that final day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Mommy or Daddy? Daddy. Yeah. Wait one second. Wait. They have to make a big commitment right now. We are pleased to welcome Waylon into the covenant community. God has made him a member of the household of God. Let us welcome him together as it is printed in your bulletin. With, With joy, joy and, and thanksgiving, thanksgiving, we now welcome you to Christ's church, for we are all one in Christ. We promise to love you, to encourage you, and to help you know and follow Christ. And I want to give you this book that you can read to him as he comes up, but I wanted to read um, a page from you because this is the most important piece that I hope you and he will take this day. Before I was made, God loved me. When I was born, God loved me. Now I am here, and God loves me. Forever and ever, God loves me. And all of God's people said, Amen. That's for you. Congratulations. Congratulations, Zach. Whew, that was pretty neat, huh? Will you guys come up here? I want you to touch the water with me a minute. Because today was a special day for Waylon because we were telling everybody that he belongs to God and God loves him. But you know what? God loves each of you. So I want you to touch this water today to remind yourself that God loves you too. Can you touch it for me? Touch the water, Nora. You want to touch the water? God loves you too. Yeah. Shall we go with Miss Nicole out to Godly Play, y'all? Here you go, sweetheart. Let us pray. Guide us, O God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm reading from Psalm 100, which is on page 481 in the Pew Bible. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth, Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our gospel lesson this morning comes to us from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, starting at verse 19. <coughs> when it was evening on that first day, the first day of the week, after Jesus has ridden, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. For if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the, in the mark of the nails and hands in his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were again at the house, and Thomas was with them this time. And although the, the doors were shut, Jesus came in and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may be come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing in him, you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So as far as I'm concerned, Thomas is our guy. The story of Doubting Thomas is a familiar story to most and is one of the most identified with biblical stories of our time. But it wasn't always this way. For centuries, Thomas was given such a bad rap by preachers and Christian leaders alike. Christians were not allowed or supposed to doubt. They were supposed to simply believe because it was truth. To doubt was to question your faith. And if your faith was wavering, then the moral foundation of your life was decaying and in crisis. You had better figure it out quickly or you were bound for hell. Your belief system was of utmost importance because what we accept as true was thought to determine how one would live their life. And no one could live a godlike life unless they were a Christian. Fast forward to our time. We know that morality doesn't just come from being a Christian. We now live in a day when we are surrounded by wonderful, faithful, and moral people of other faith traditions, and some who don't even identify with any. We also live in an age of science. In the 21st century, believing such an outrageous event like the resurrection is pretty complicated because we cannot prove it. To believe that someone can really be raised from the dead is deemed simply impossible. In order for something to be true, we need to, ex we need to see it, experience it, to have proof. So come on, Thomas is our guy. He gets that this journey with Jesus is no more difficult than, is more, is more difficult than a transaction to belief. Thomas needed more than someone telling him that Jesus was alive. For many of us, particularly those in younger generations, faith can no longer simply be what we believe in our heads. Our religious and spiritual knowledge comes from what we experience and what we do. 
Our faith comes from what we can see in the world and how we gather information about what we feel, what we hear, what we see, and what we taste. Because of this, the idea that God became human and resurrected from the dead is, well, debatable. We need to have an experience of God here and now to affirm that the resurrection could have happened. So a man like Thomas is important to us people of faith now. Thomas reminds us that it's okay to question the validity of our tradition and still, and still continue to be people of faith. Thomas needed to see Jesus to believe, just like we need to have an experience of God to believe as well. And we all have our own stories to tell. For some of us, committing to Jesus was what was expected. It was what our parents told us was truth. It was what our culture told us was truth. And so it became truth to us. For others, we aren't sure we are even there yet. We long to not be slaves to a mindless following of God, but instead yearn to meet and know God to find something palpable to tell us we aren't naive for believing in Jesus. We seek something to provide us with meaning because we know life is more than A plus B equals C. There's mystery in the world and we seek to experience more of it. Thomas' story is our story. And so we need to speak and let our Thomases be heard. Let the world know that we might not have it all together, that we invite them to join us on this journey of faith, of discovery, to meet Jesus in the world. And when we say, like Thomas, we want to see Jesus, we aren't asking for something black and white. We are asking for the mystery of God to be revealed. We trust that God is in our midst, and so we wait for it to be revealed. Seeing Jesus happens at weird times in our lives. I posed the question to friends on Facebook a while back to see if folks would share um, when they see Jesus in the world, and these are some of the responses. I saw God yesterday when people were donating blood through the Red Cross. The hand of God is evident in the human body's ability to accept and use the blood of another human to heal itself, and in the donor body's ability to replenish its own blood supply. And then, of course, there is the willingness of people to take the time to donate their blood to others. Another wrote, I see God in the selfless actions of others. Another, I saw God in my bowling tournament. I see God in the charitable acts of others. I see God in my students, in their resilience and energy. We see God when we walk in the woods and see how amazing creation is. We see Jesus when we serve the poor. We see Jesus in a stranger's kindness. We can see and know God when we sit down in those pews and look at the light hitting the sanctuary in a particular way. We see Jesus when we come around this table, hundreds of us, and are united as one despite all of our differences. Thomas is showing us this day that faith isn't simply something in the head. Faith is tangible, using our senses to experience God. A friend wrote, Thomas's story teaches that the resurrection does not create faith. Resurrection does not create faith. Rather, that faith acknowledges the resurrection. Because of God's gift of faith, we are able to see God in the world in so many different and unexpected places, not because of any proof. 
Hopefully, when a community of faith lives a life together, bearing witness to the resurrection, it can serve as an invitation. We can serve as an invitation to receive God's gift of faith so that they may too see and believe. Seeing faith as a gift yet full of doubt and questions like Thomas is even more true with a generation of youth and young adults, precisely because they've grown up in a world different than most of you. We can't prove much, and they aren't just going to take our word for it anymore. Their lives have not been infused with and surrounded by religion. There have mostly been echoes from grandparents or moans from parents having to go to church when they were younger. There are some fond memories of church and religion out there, but those aren't the stories that often get told. So by and large, like Thomas, they cannot believe in Jesus if they haven't been told the stories of Scripture and our own stories of meeting Jesus in the world. And if they haven't heard those stories, then how can they know what a struggle faith can be? And if they haven't had the courage to go through a struggle, how can they manage to see God in our world and believe? So we've reached a cultural climate where in our context, we need to again recover the courage of Thomas and use all of our senses and communicate with others the presence of Jesus in our own lives and how we see God in the world and exclaim, my Lord, my God. Maybe we need to recover our own honesty about what a gift faith really is. I've spent a lot of time um, in the past 15 years, my, my time in ministry, um, working with 7th, 8th, and 9th graders in confirmation class. How many of you know what confirmation is? Yeah, a number of you. Confirmation is a process in the Presbyterian Church where people can intentionally over the course of a year or set a set amount of period to learn more intensely about God and whether or not they want to become a part of the church. Well, those students are our doubting Thomases. In our classrooms, they have the honesty to say what they think about stuff. They question and challenge traditional assumptions and most of their questions have to do with wanting to meet Jesus, to talk with Jesus, to have an experience with God. So one year, just to give you an example, we were talking specifically about worship and thinking about what it was, why we do all this stuff, and here were some of their questions. Why do we do it? Why do we come and sit here? How does God understand us? The wording of our prayers are very confusing. Yeah, sometimes. Why do we need hymns? The words are old, and we don't understand those words. How do we know if our worship is actually worship, as in, does God actually hear us? The scripture readings are confusing. They are hard for me to follow. Yes, sometimes. We are surrounded by students who have shown us faith over the years and have shown us that it doesn't <coughs> mean that we can't have questions or doubts. They are showing us that we can no longer simply use our minds to impart our faith to others, thinking they will get it by osmosis. Our hunger to experience God in new ways is wonderful and graciously received by Jesus. And not everything has to be resolved. Do we need to see to believe? Yes, we do. Anyone can see Jesus, though, because Jesus has promised that he will always be with us. It may not be in many different ways, but we all will meet Jesus, whether we believe it or not. Because that's what faith is. It's a gift. And that's the reality of God's work in our world. God promises 
to be here. The story of Doubting Thomas is a gift to us. It shows us that these old stories that God gave us, they can still help us, can still guide us. It helps us to know that faith is not without questions or doubt. Faith is a gift. It is a gift of God showing us Jesus at work in the world. May we all, at some point in our lives, be able to exclaim as Thomas does when we meet Jesus on our journey, my Lord and my God. The awe and mystery of refaith revealed in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. As we receive our offering this morning, let us give of our life, of our labor, to God.
may be seated. Friends, this is the table of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the table of questions and answers. This is the table of mystery and of certainty. This is the table of love that is so wide, yet love that is so specific. So come this day. Celebrate. Be a part of community. Be with God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Faithful God, you are the creator of all things, and you've crafted us in your image, and you have continually offered us liberation throughout history. Yet it is in our unwillingness to wholeheartedly and significantly alter our lives that we find ourselves again at this table. And for that, we thank you, God for your constant presence in our lives and your power in the world to make all things new. Therefore, with Christians everywhere, here and in eternity, we forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy are you, God of redemption, in the midst of his friends, in the congregation of his enemies, Jesus kept the promise made to you to love us to the very end. Our friend, he welcomed all. Our teacher, he modeled the life of obedience and faith. Our Lord, he endured the snares of death that we might have life with you. It is at this table we know Jesus' faithfulness in saving us. For every time that we eat the bread, our brokenness is made whole. Every time we drink from this cup, we receive unceasing grace. Every time we come to the table, we know the mystery called faith. So we ask, O oh God, that you spend your, send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and cup. Feed us with your compassion. Quench our thirst with hope so that we might carry this gift of Jesus Christ to all of your people. We pray this in the strong name of the one we worship God in community, holy in one, and pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
So friends, on the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat it, do it in remembrance of me. And then in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And he said, this cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. For every time that we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we are proclaiming the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
please join me in our prayer after communion that is printed in your bulletin. Bountiful God, we give you thanks that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Christ, strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Two notes about our life together. Today is the second Sunday of the month, which, which means we have our monthly community meal, which is down in the great room. Have a cup of coffee in the fellowship hall, and please join us down there. And if you have a few minutes, you may join the character builders, which uh, will be meeting in 209 to 10. And then the most important announcement, don't, re don't forget this, remember this, remember this. Um, we are having part of our interim process in the next month is a number of workshops titled Celebrate What's Right with the Church. And so we invite you to sign up to be a part of that as we vision together how God is calling us to be, to serve one another and to serve the world, to serve Finley, um, and to spread the gospel. So please sign up outside the main office for one of those. They're at different times of the day, morning, night, weekend, weekday. Um, we want everybody to participate, to be a part of how we understand God calling us to be faithful in our day and age. So please sign up. And will you stand and join me in our final hymn?
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God, and may the power of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. And go out into the world with peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen.